First, I'd like to formally welcome this table of guests that we have right up front today, which is the Young Scholars Program through the College of Engineering, which gives high school youth in our community an opportunity to learn about science, research, and engineering, and new areas, even like bioengineering and the new college of medicine, physics, and other ways that they can make a real impact through science. So let's give a little bit of a warm welcome and a round of applause for all these folks. We'll be passing the mic and we are not going to ask a question today because we're already slow on time. So we're all we're going to do is your name, so first and last name, and your profession or where you work, and if you're a student, what you're studying or what your interests are, that would be great. Um, and there's one person that I'm going to specifically call out though because it's somebody's birthday today. I and she also is one of our favorite women in engineering. It's Lori Patterson's birthday today. So why don't we sing her and make her uncomfortable. So I should not be one, the one holding the mic because I have the worst voice known to man in singing. But I gotta start anyway, so. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic. Phoebe, we're going to talk a lot about you when we get into intro, and I believe in your remarks. So you can just say who you are so they know who you are as the featured speaker, and then pass the mic to you. Hello, I'm Phoebe Lemire, and I am at the university, not the university, but I am affiliated with the University of Illinois, but the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Engineering Research and Development Center, CERO for sure. I'm Shauna Martell, a Senior Engineering Manager at OAF, or Yahoo, across the street. Hi, I'm Susan Hunter, and I'm a Senior Systems Architect, uh, but I want to do a little bit more uh, work with the as well. Yeah. Hi, I'm Claire Tinkadi. I'm a Software Engineer. I specialize in DevOps, and I'm also at Sorrel. One of you will be fearless, Mona, and I hope you grab her. Hi, my name is Amari Houston. I'm a high school student in the Spears program. Yeah. <laughs> what high school? What high school? I go to Central High School. That's the one without air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote myself. Um, hi, my name is Mona Jawad, and I go to Centennial High School, and I'm really interested in environmental engineering. Hi, my name is Neha Hamar. I'm in the Poets program, and I go to Central. Hi, my name is Kevin Gomez, and I go to Central, and I'm um, working at the Mechanical Engineering Laboratory. Hi, I'm Chardale. I go to Central High School, and I'm part of the Physics Program. Hi, I'm Joe McLean. I'm a Physics teacher at Centennial High School, and I'm also working in a, an ECE lab this summer. My name is Michaela Patton, and I'm in the physics program. I'm interested in mechanics. Hi, I'm Devika. I go to Centennial High School, and I'm working on computational biology this summer. Hi, my name is Paige Wong. Um, I go to Centennial High School, and I'm in the physics program. Uh, hi, my name is Vinan Parada. And I'm part of the Spears program, but I'm currently um, working in the field of molecular and cellular biology. I am Laura Weil. I'm the associate director here at the research park. And I'm just going to add a couple of things um, to what Laura said. First of all, we're lucky enough to have Lori speaking next week with us here. Um, the 19th, talking about growing and managing employees. So, hope to see many of you in this very room again at that event. 
Um, and we do lots and lots of events here, and you are, many of you we, we have seen before, we hope to see you again, and uh, so please check out our calendar, you can get on our announcements, you can talk, always talk to me about that, but thank you for coming out today. G'day, I'm uh, Trudy Cribb, CEO of Keentech. Ceramics, everything you want to know and don't want to know about ceramics. <laughs> I also go on as a professor of material science at the New York. Cheryl Mitchell, Director of Management Operations at New at Starfire Industries this week. Uh, my name is Kelsey, I'm an intern at Starfire Industries and I'm studying material science engineering at the university here. Hi, it's Tina Cooper, also at Starfire. Um, I'm an engineering project manager. Hi, I'm Bryn. I'm an engineering <coughs> Bateson and high school student going to Centennial. Hello, I'm Lauren Moon. I work in, as a postdoc in psychology and computer science, and I have a startup here at New York. Hello, I'm Lori Pesh, and I've gotten way too much attention already. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Hello, I'm Sophia Kolutz Bakakis, I'm a researcher, an air quality researcher in civil and environmental engineering. If you have questions, please welcome. Hello, I'm Helen Jha, I'm the Director of Respect Business, Technology Services, University of Illinois. I'm Katie Churchill, I work with Murray Wise Associates here in town as a high real estate and financial advisor. Hi, I'm Elon Ziegler, and I work at the Army's Construction Engineering Research Laboratory, or CERL, um, as an industrial engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And seated to my left is a co-worker of mine and, and Phoebe's as well, um, Gloria Franchek, and she's a computer scientist um, at CERL. Dr. Allison Jones, CEO of the startup in town called VRMD. Hi, I'm Tatiana Garcia. I am a product support engineer for a software company called Optimatics. We do optimization of price distribution in water collection systems. Thank you. My name is uh, Nina Katri. I'm an environmental engineer and I'm the founder and president of a wastewater startup called Ensurcy. Hey, I'm Hindu from Food Vaccine Incorporated. Uh, a startup at Research Park, and I'm the CEO and director of the company. In case you are interested in how to have a vaccine in a fruit, please start. <laughs> Take care. Hi, my name is Misha. I am an intern at Capital One, and I'm studying electrical engineering at the university. Hi, my name is Aparajitha. Um, I'm going to be a sophomore in computer engineering, and I'm also interning at Capital One. Hi, my name is Ritika. I'm also interning at Capital One, and I'm going to be a sophomore in computer science. Hi, my name is Ashna. I'm a rising sophomore studying computer engineering here at the university, and I'm, I'm also a uh, major at Capital One. Hi, my name is Donna Brown. I'm a professor in the UCE department. Hi, I'm Annabelle Romero. Uh, I'm a physics PhD student, and I work at the nuclear physics laboratory of this university. Uh, hi, I'm Sophie again. I'm a UAUC student, and I'm interning at Intelligent Medical Objects. Hi, I'm Erin Dolan. I'm also interning at Intelligent Medical Objects, and I'm a community health major. Hello, I'm Jenna Logan. Um, I'm also interning at IMO, um, and I'm studying computer science. Um, hi, I'm Aditi, um, I'm a rising junior at the university, and I'm also a junior at Intelligent Medical Objects. Hi, I'm Lena Med, I'm the site director for the Oka Acceleration Center here in Research Park. Hello, I'm Angela Nelson, the director of Steam Studio at Next Generation School. Hi, I'm Kate Key, I am from the Center of Machine Learning at Capital One. Hi, I'm Giselle Rodriguez. I work at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Construction Engineer Research Laboratory, CERO, and I'm the Chief of the Energy Branch. Hi, my name is Victoria <laughs> Heath, and I'm a Master's Student in Environmental Engineering at the University. Um, hi, my name is Miriam Tagawa. I'm an intern at CERO, and I'm getting my Master's in Hi, my 
My name is Amanda Rodriguez. I'm a research assistant at Searle, and I'm an undergraduate <laughs> student of Earth Planning. Hi, I'm Andrea Rudy. I'm president and CEO of Fox Development Corporation and we're the developer of the research park here. Hi, I'm Dana Hunt. I'm a delivery manager at Syngenta. I'm Catherine Bjorn, I'm a geospatial analyst at Cerrone. Hi, my name is Arielle Rawson and I'm the founder of Ingenium Manufacturing. A lot of pets because I'm Kimberly Alexander Brown and I'm from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. <laughs> I'm Pamela Greer and I'm from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and a doctoral student in the College of Education. And the closest to technology is being with Dr. Phoebe Lanier. <laughs> hey, I'm Susan McClure and I'm the technology librarian and the Champaign Public Library. Hi, I'm Lindsay Miller. I'm an urban planning master student and so one of the things I forgot to say that I wanted to say earlier is that I see some past and future women in tech speakers in the room. So if you were a, I don't want to miss anyone, so if you were a past speaker, I know who you are, please stand up. And I also want to introduce Kate Key, who will be speaking to us in a future women in tech. So if you guys can just stand up and wave. Thanks. Susan. <laughs> Hello, <Lori. coughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to pass the back, mic back to Laura. Introduce our speaker. <laughs> It's my privilege to get to introduce Dr. Phoebe Lanier. And I had the privilege of meeting her through the introduction of our Vice Chancellor for Research. Hopefully we'll have her as a speaker sometime. She's an inspiring woman who's now the head of research for the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And she was so impressed with recent interactions with Searle that she wanted to see better connections between the university and the research park. And I had the honor of being invited by Dr. Lanier to go tour Searle and saw how many fabulous female scientists are working there. So thank you to all of you that are here showing off how you uh, are using your careers to others that are hearing your stories as well. So Dr. Phoebe Lanier is our speaker today, and I'll say a little bit more about her background. She has a bachelor's and a master's science degree from general engineering in math and human-computer interactions. She has her PhD in technology education from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And she has had a long career in science and STEM fields. Part of that included being a program manager at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, NCSA, here at U of I. She was also a faculty member at Southern Illinois University, where she taught courses in systems management and multimedia technologies. She worked for the National Science Foundation in the Science and Technology Center on Emerging Behaviors of Integrated Cellular Systems. And currently, Dr. Lanier is the Technology Transfer Officer at the U.S. Army Engineering Research and Development Center, or CERL, as we would know them in Champaign, which employs somewhere around 400 people. So for those of you who think Champaign companies don't have more than six employees, this is another great <laughs> example of one of our large employers of people in STEM fields here in the community. And they're doing a lot of great work that includes civil engineering and infrastructure projects, which you'll hopefully hear about today. Also important is always giving back in the community. And Phoebe Lanier is one of those inspiring individuals who does that as well. She found, she's the founder and CEO of the Center for Educational Excellence in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, CEE STEM, a nonprofit organization whose goal is to increase underrepresented minority youth participation in STEM fields. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Phoebe Lanier. to manage my space because the, the light is in my eyes. And I have a paper and then I try to use a clicker and then I have a pen in my hand. So you all bear with me and I'm trying to walk the room so you know how that goes. So anyway, thank you so much, Laura, for that uh, introduction. I am so excited. 
I'm honored, I'm thrilled, I'm excited, I'm ecstatic, I'm enthused, and all the other E's. <laughs> but I'm humbled today to serve as your speaker for this afternoon. I promise you I won't hold you, hold you long, but, and I promise you that I will inspire you and encourage you. Laura, I believe you told me that in your tenure at on campus you had not visited Searle until this year. That's correct. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. And so that's one of the things that I will, I want to do is to bridge the gap or to do more collaboration with the University of Illinois and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at Searle. And this is just the beginning. And so I see us doing partnerships with some of the uh, incubator uh, companies here uh, in the research park. And I see us exchanging uh, with uh, cooperative research and development agreements, uh, patent license agreements, and I'll share a little bit more about that later. So I uh, just wanted to, first of all, thank the Searle people that are here, if you could stand up, thank you for supporting and showing your love. Thank you so much. And all of uh, my family and friends back there, Kim and Pam, thank you all so much back there. So, my goals is to provide you a little bit of information about Searle and I'm going to provide some inspiration. And then also, this is not a one-way conversation. This is interaction. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hands, OK? Speak, talk back to me, say amen, wave your hands, say something. Let me know that you are understanding what I'm saying or agreeing with what I'm saying. Or if you're puzzled, you're kind of like, I can read faces. So anyway, let, let this be an interactive type of discussion, okay? So, this is a map of the U.S. Army Engineering Research and Development Center. So we have seven laboratories throughout the United States. Um, the bulk of them are um, in Vicksburg, Mississippi, uh, four of those, and then of course Searle in Illinois. And then we have an office in Alexandria, Virginia, ge the Geospatial Research Lab. And then we also have another Corral um, in New Hampshire. And then I also wanted to wanted to point out that we are we have about eleven 1 hundred uh, engineers and scientists and about twenty one hundred. Um, employees, total full-time employees, and so this doesn't include the contractors and the students. And 76% of those have advanced degrees in engineering and science. So, uh, Ernick's mission is to solve the nation's most challenging problems in civil and mil military engineering, uh, geospatial, uh, water resources, environmental. So we do a plethora of engineering type of research and development. And the focus is, of course, for the Army, the Department of Defense, and then also for the nation's good. So what we're wanting to do is what we develop in the lab, we also want to transfer that out to the public so that the public can benefit from what the government has has done or accomplished. And so, CERA, Construction Engineering Research Lab, so these are some of the things that uh, we focus on. We were established in 1968, so we are in our 50th year. Now, before today, who knew about CERA? Before today. <laughs> All right. So these are some of the um, research areas that we focus on. And then um, I believe we have one branch chief here, Giselle Rodriguez, and she's uh, the branch chief of the energy uh, branch. And so what I wanted to do was just 
give you a little bit of uh, information about some of the things that we do at, at Sorrel. So we have a paint te technology center, and that's led by two females, Dr. Rebecca Wilson and Brooke Diven. And so with, with that, the paint technology center, um, we provide guidance on compliance with health and safety, environmental regs. Uh, we conduct uh, research and development on paint and coatings of technologies and surface preparation. And then there's what uh, we call automated construction of expeditionary structures or ACEs for short. So who's heard of 3D printing? Everybody. Yeah. So that's basically what the ACEs does. So it prints uh, custom design expeditionary structures in the field so that uh, they can build on site. So it's a, it reduces the building material that's needed and then it um, reduces the construction by about 62 percent. Okay? And so these are some of the pictures that you can see. Um, this picture here is the 3D head and so this particular one the, the uh, image on the top is how we began the structure and this is the ending the ending result of that. And then the next technology that I wanted to introduce to you is uh, called the TESS or the Triaxial Earthquake and Shock Simulator. And we call it the Shape Table. So it uh, is three-dimensional. It uh, tests the ability of systems and facilities, equipment, how they are going to survive earthquakes or something, you know, drastic motion. And so we test that. And then in our facility, this is, this is like a, the, the platform, this is the, the, the shape table itself. And then this is a building that is undergoing some testing on the shape table. And so we uh, collaborate um, with a lot of private industry that use our shape table to test their various chillers and coolers and all of that to see how they will sustain you know, an earthquake or any sudden movements. So they, we collaborate a, a, a lot with our private industry and then also with the University of Illinois and some other uh, institutions that are interested in testing their various equipment. Questions so far? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Another of our technologies uh, is entitled Sustainment Management System, and it includes a whole bunch of things. So we have a paver that um, assesses the pavement, the roads. Um, then we have railer, which, what you think that would do? Railroad. Railroad, you got it. And what about buildings? Buildings, yeah, you all are so smart. And what about roof? <laughs> Smart, you go to the head of the class. And so some of the uh, benefits of, of these sustainment management system suites, and then we have an expert here, Claire, she works on Builder, right? Yeah, so she's one of the programmers for, our, for the Builder. And so uh, one of the things that we want to provide um, is a integrated solution to capture a full spectrum of investment requirements. So we want to in we want to uh, provide an assessment before the road or the builder or the building or the railroad before they fail. So we want to provide an assessment to see when or when is the best time to repair a road or repair a building, et cetera. I'm not the expert. I'm the technology transfer officer, so I just know a little bit about it to be dangerous. So. How many of you have heard of technology transfer? Few of you. What about the high school students? Don't want to call that, but you never, you don't even know what it is, do you? Okay, that's okay. Anybody else? Technology transfer. So basically, it's taking 
an idea or technology and transfer, transfer, transferring it from one place to the other to be used in another setting. So what we're trying to do with all of our technologies is when we develop them in the, re in the, in the lab, we develop them but we want others to use it so that it can better, so it can enhance the state of the, the, that company or that institution or whatever. So technology transfer, transfer of technology or intellectual property from one place to the other. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So, so what I provided um, are some numbers for our technology transfer program just for SORL. And so we have a lot of acronyms, and I'm sorry I couldn't put all of the, the words up here, so I just used acronyms. So basically, the CRAVAs are research and development agreements. The IAAs are in, interagency agreements, memorandum of understanding or memorandums of agreement. The MTA is the Material Transfer Agreement, and then patent licenses where we patented a particular technology, and now the company wants to use it to and, and sell it, and then we get royalties back. So that's the patent licenses, and then the TSAs are Testing Service Agreements. So when you when I talked about the Paint Technology Center, and when I talked about the tests. Uh, the, that shake table, we use a lot of the TSAs or the testing service agreements for companies to come to our lab and test their equipment on our, 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 in our facilities. And so we, we develop TSAs with those organizations. So this is pretty much a summary of our tech transfer for FY17. And then uh, intellectual property, so our patents, our active patents, we currently have 14 active patents, 17 patent applications, and then 12 patent license agreements. Okay. And so, there is so much that we can do together. The University of Illinois, and the Corps of Engineers Construction Engineering Research Lab. So we have to take advantage of our, of our co-location. Okay. So let's do this. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are y'all sleepy? Y'all had too much food. <laughs> okay. And if you feel up to, if you would like to, please stand up and stretch or do whatever. Okay. All right, it's, it's really okay. So, I promise you to provide you with information, which I needed. So, are you excited about the information that I shared with you? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would be. And now, I want to inspire you, especially the, the high school students. I love high school students. I love high school students. It's my passion to encourage you all to go into the STEM field, so I'm excited to have you here. So, some women making leaps and bounds, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through all of the women in the history, but I'm just going to touch on a couple of people. So the first one is Elizabeth Blackwell. Have you heard of her? Yes? yes? No? Yes. Maybe some... Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, okay. And so she was uh, the first woman in America to receive an MD. How cool is that? She graduated from New York's Geneva Medical College in 1849. Wow. And then I know that those who are in computer science or computer programming heard of Grace Hopper, right? Raise your hand, great Hopper people. Oh, most of the room, yes. So she is, and then there's also a Grace Hopper conference. Has anyone attended a great Grace Hopper conference? Yes, yeah, so I attended a couple of them as well attended. Um, so she uh, received her bachelor's, master's and doctorate. Wow, she's doing a lot of great, she was doing a lot of great things. So she was considered the queen of code. Who wants to aspire to be a Grace Hopper? 
Grace Hopper's in the house? Yeah. Grace Hopper's over there? No Grace Hopper's? No. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe it's a, another woman that you may want to emulate. How about Katherine Johnson? Who's heard of Katherine Johnson? Hidden figures. Okay. What about Mae Jemison? Some amazing people. And tell me, what do you think they had in common? This is interactive, remember? What do you think they all had in common? STEM background. <laughs> Say it again? STEM background. STEM background? Wonderful. Okay. What else? All females. <laughs> all females. Okay, yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yes.
You can overcome any obstacle, any barrier. You have a whole room of people to support you in your endeavor. A whole bunch of people. And I want to encourage you to achieve. So tell me, what Goliath are you facing? What giant are you facing? This is interactive. What giant are you facing? <laughs> what giant, what Goliath are you facing? Because we want to help you overcome. That's why we're here. Not just to have lunch. Lunch is good, but we want to encourage. We want to encourage you. We want you to help you achieve what you may think is unachievable or, or impossible. What is your giant? You're afraid. And I'll give you an example of being afraid and overcoming. Believe it or not, I used to be shy. I, grew, I used to be shy as a high school student. I didn't ask a lot of questions or anything like that. And it wasn't until I finished my undergrad that I began to address my fear of speaking before people. And in order for me to do that, I had to just present and give speeches. And now, look at me now. <laughs> but you can overcome that. What else? What else is your, what else is your life? <coughs> Fear. Self-limiting beliefs. Self-limiting beliefs. Anybody else? Yes. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Yeah. Anybody else? Lack of confidence in what you do. Lack of confidence. I was that too. I was that too. But you're not. You're not. You're overcoming. I know you. I'm a witness. Anybody else? So I'd like to leave you with this thought and with this inspiration. Um, and I don't think I had it in my bio, but I love to sing. <laughs> and I was a member of the University of Illinois Black Chorus. My mentor, Dr. Ollie Watts Davis, is back there. She is still the conductor of the University of Illinois Black Chorus, and I was in Black Chorus for years and years in engineering, but I love to sing, and I stayed in Black Chorus for probably 20 years, <laughs> 25 years. But the, it served as a motivational encouragement to me when I had to study or had a calculus exam or whatever. The Black Chorus provided that inspiration, that motivation for me to say, oh, I can do this. I have this. I got this calc exam. I got this town exam. So I want to leave you with this song. One of my favorites. I have a whole bunch of favorite songs, but this is one of my favorites. It's called Faith That Can Conquer Anything. I have the faith to see the invisible, expect the impossible, believe the incredible, faith that can conquer anything, faith that uproots my problems. Faith to know my God has already solved them. Faith to envision my freedom. I have the faith that can conquer. See
encouragement, you know how to get to me. Okay? Thank you so much, Laura. She may have been gone. But thank, thank Laura for the invitation again. And thank you for being a gracious audience. I appreciate you. Thank you. Questions for me? <laughs> Dr. Jones? Yes, uh, I think it's fantastic your presentation is very inspirational. Uh, you know, I know of the Alan Required Engineer location, but so many, uh, they never have an open house or something where we could come see it. And I think it would be really great for the community if that would be possible. And seem like the, the very type of person to help make that happen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <laughs> that would be great. Thanks. Yes. Maybe we can take women in tech on the road. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions? So how can I take advantage of this as a, as a high school teacher? What, what can I do? Can I, can I bring groups? Can I, can I grab a group of girls and yes. we come see the, yes. the women in yes. Sir Yes, and we can uh, coordinate with our public affairs office and we can, my number, you know how to contact me and we can make it happen. repeat myself. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, we have a couple of programs. One is called JAMS program and we bring students for I believe it's two weeks time during the summer to see our facilities and work with our researchers working on lab. So that's an option. But we also have uh, another program where the high school students and high school professors can come spend the summer working with one of our researchers in our labs. So we have uh, several programs. I know a website that coordinates and puts out that kind of information, so maybe they should send it to me next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your um, presentation. It was very inspirational, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you about your plans for interacting with um, startups here in the um, community. <coughs> um, you mentioned, I think, that you're looking to do more interaction and I've actually uh, interacted with Cyril, um, uh, Dr. Martin Page, and his group, um, and you know, fascinating work that the Army Corps is doing with wastewater recycling. And um, yeah, I was curious to see what kind of formal um, programs you might have in the future. So we have several mechanisms to do that. One being the Technology Transfer Office, which I am a T T2 officer, and so what we're uh, wanting to do is have road shows. So you, your company comes to our lab, our lab comes to your company, or whatever. And so that not just your company, but the companies in the in the research park. And so we can share what we're doing with each other to see where the links are, and then go from there. Yeah. So. It's my number, call me. <laughs> Did you want to add anything just now to that? Um, no, I think that there, just being here doing this lunch, it's been a lot of interest in learning more about our organization, so I think we need to do a better job in promoting ourselves and doing more outreach. Any other questions? Well, I think we'll wrap up there. We, of course, have you know more time. You guys are welcome to hang out for a little bit and talk and interact and hopefully facilitate some inter interactions. Just wanted to thank you again, Dr. Lanier, for being here and inspiring us. And uh, we hope that we will see many of you again and that we can keep these relationships going and building on them. So thank you so much. <laughs>